Hello and welcome back to the Native Drum. I am your host, Sean Little Bear. Today we're going to do a two-sided drum on a metal rim. We're going to use a metal, a small metal drum. It was used actually for nuts and bolts. Um, stands about yay tall. This is a half of drum. Um, and they're just sturdy enough to, to handle a, a lot of metal pieces inside but they're not thick enough to be a, uh, the size, say, of a 55-gallon drum. Um, with the top taken off, um, the drums actually um, are filled with metal nuts and bolts. And I acquired these uh, from a friend of mine, actually, who they throw these away or they repurpose them. Um, so. Instead of throwing it away, I just decided, well, let me have a couple. I want to work with them. So the, it's actually about twice this size. I've already cut one um, and used it. And this is the bottom segment of that. And what you would do is simply make a mark, um, like I've made here, a small mark around the rim uh, to show uh, where you want to cut. And you can either have a machine shop do it for you or you can actually do it yourself. Uh, I, what I use is a Dremel tool with a cutting wheel on it. And I just slowly go around and make little dots and then I, I skim it until it goes through the metal. Uh, when you do that, you gotta be a, a, at a place where it's gonna throw a lot of sparks and uh, you're gonna get a lot of heavy metal dust, so you wanna have a respirator and safety goggles and all the equipment that you need. Um, once you get it cut out, it's going to have a raw edge, uh, just like this, where, uh, where you see where you've cut it out. Um, you take then a pair of pliers and start bending. Uh, I do it about every inch, inch and a half, all the way around until we, where you get an angle going, uh, bending it in, and <clears throat> then you can go on both sides, uh, either working with one side and then work with the other. And after you've bent it in so far, um, you can take um, uh, one of your hammers, either a ball peen hammer or a regular type of mallet or claw hammer. And once they're, they're bent in so far, then you can start hammering out your shape. Uh, it'll deform a little bit, but you know you don't have to worry about that. As long as you keep working with it and keep making it smoother, you can actually make it as round as you want. Um, if you want it this round, it's going to take an awful lot of pounding, an awful lot of, of smoothing out. What I've done with this rim is to take the two that are uh, that have been folded over the edges, and I just make sure that they're folded over to the exact uh, same width. Um, once you do that, then you can uh, take a hammer and be beating it on a hard surface, um, just go around the rim and make sure that your metal is bent all the way in to where it's not going to uh, rattle when you, once you put the hide on. Then, taking the form uh, you find out where the metal comes together. It's right here. This is where the, the metal seam is, where they welded the actual barrel together. You don't want to put your hole there if you want to put a handle on your, your drum. So I've taken it a third of the way around, and I've taken some hardware with a couple of, of nuts, and I've put my eyelet through with some reinforcing washers, and I've tightened that up to where it's not going to be affected by the vibration when you start um, drumming on it. And plus, you'll need to get the hide wet every once in a while to keep it from cracking and to make it last longer. So for that purpose, uh, with this being at one-third and then this uh, joint being at one-third, I went across the drum 
on the other third and drilled a tiny hole. And what that is for is to allow the uh, natural material that we are dealing with, uh, which is your rawhide, it, it actually allows it to breathe. Because as drummers know, uh, a lot of times when you when it sounds a little flat and you want it you want it to produce more sound, you put it by a heat source. So in order to keep it uh, pliable and to keep it reverberating, uh, you need to wet it every once in a while with um, some type of skin oil or a damp wash rag. So in order to keep it from uh, getting too much humidity inside because metal rims don't breathe uh, like the wooden ones, like the drum that we did in the previous episode, in episode one. So you kind of have to compensate for that by, by adding a little hole, uh, something not big enough for, for insects to crawl into, but <laughs> you know, you, you want to keep them out. Um, but anyway, we are working with metal today, and this is the drum rim that I have kind of worked with at home with just the tools at hand. And we're going to tie this drum, and we're going to use some white rawhide. Uh, the last episode in episode one, um, if you can remember, we tied a drum, we used natural rawhide, and we had cut the lace, and we had, we had used these... Uh, uh, die cutters and a hammer and this hard rubber to pound out the holes and we did a, a set of 16 holes and then we cut enough lace to go around the drum about four and a half times. On this drum, because we're going we're gonna to double tie it, we're going to go around skipping the holes until it comes around once and then as we go back around we'll hit all the holes that we skipped uh, we need about five and a half uh, rounds of rawhide lace. So I've already cut those and we're already going to, we're going to position them in the position that we want. And we're going to take this little rim and it is prepared. It has uh, our little hole for the, for the humidity. It has a handle. Um, we're going to put a rope in um, so that so you can carry it around. And then the rawhide itself will not be stressed by something tied onto it or, or somebody jerking on it. So now that we have the handle and we have our little rim, um, it's made from recycled material. Um, what I've done is I have, uh, I have already smoked off our materials and I've already prayed a blessing over them. And now we are ready to produce our double-sided um, white rawhide little drum. And this, this will be just a little bit smaller than a 15 inch. So we're gonna do that today here on this episode. Now we're gonna uh, get our, our rawhide ready for our drum. We have, the, we have the shell and in a previous episode you have seen that we have uh, uh, cut rawhide and you saw how we use the, the scissors to go around and cut a piece of lace and I've already prepared that. I've already um, uh, cut the rounds and again just like the natural rawhide you want to use a piece of rawhide that doesn't have any holes uh, that has limited um, uh, marks on the skin and has pieces that are thick enough and they don't have a disparity between the thickness and the uh, thin part of the hide. What you want to do is you want to keep your hide, um, keep it um, to the point to where you know where the thick side is, if there's a thick side, and you know where the thin side is. Because that's very important once you go to putting your, your drum together. So we've got one side here, and here is the other side. And we just have to get it out of the water. It's going to be a little wet, so and that's what makes it pliable. That's what makes it workable. Rawhide is made from live animal cells. 
Um, the animal was no longer living, but actually the material, the skin from the rawhide is actually made up of live cells. That means that they will expand and contract uh, when you soak them in water. Uh, they'll relax. Uh, when you dry them out and put it next to heat or a heat source, it will dry out and it will stiffen. It will contract. So we're going to use that as part of our drum making process. So if, if you can remember that these are live cells, but they're no longer alive. So we're going to position um, this one to be the bottom part of our project. And we'll position our shell on it. And then we'll use this one as our top. And we have an even number of, of holes that have been punched. And these are sets of holes. Uh, we have 16 on the top and 16 on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to align them to where our holes are perpendicular or on top of one another. And then as we start our tying process, I'll figure which side is the thin side, if we have one, and which side is the thick side. Okay, I need to turn this around. And the reason being, we want the thick side on, on one side of our project to go with the thin side um, of the opposite. This would be the top, and this would be the bottom. So you want a thick and a thin, and a thick and a thin, which is pretty much what I've got here. So once, once we have that, it, it doesn't have to do with the aesthetics as much, but it does have to do with the way that the actual drum is going to sound um, once you get it all put together. And even though this is going to be more or less a practice drum, or a drum for a, um, like somebody's grandson or, or a toddler or a, you know, somebody up to junior high school who would actually use this to practice on. Um, you still want, want it to have a good sound. You want it to, to have a beat to it. That way they can get to know what a drum sounds like, uh, what is expected of it. And then when they go graduate up to say a larger drum and they're sitting with other people, they're not gonna be as um, as embarrassed or they're not going to know what to expect. They'll all automatically know that this is the way the drum is and this is, these are the, the drumsticks and, and you kind of know the etiquette. So you got to kind of think of all these things before you, you know, start tying it together that <clears throat> this is something that someone's going to use and you never know. It, it may benefit somebody's life. It may make somebody uh, feel happy that hears the songs and it may not be just for the drummer it may be for the people that are around it they want to hear a song they want to hear um, something that makes them feel good so we always think about that as drum makers we always want to keep that in mind so I have my lace cut and as we did in um, episode one I took a piece of rawhide and I used my scissors to um, start cutting a, a small piece of lace. And then once it gets so long, uh, you measure it, make sure it goes around, uh, around at least four and a half. In this case, I did it uh, five and a half to six times so that we would have plenty of lace. So it's better to have lace left over rather than having not enough. And then you have to race back and cut more lace and then start working on your project. So now that we have our lace, we have our holes cut and punched. So now we're ready to go ahead and start with the tying of our drum. And the first thing we do is we measure out all the lace, make sure there's no knots, make sure it's not kinked up and make sure that we can um, go from one end to the other without having to stop 
and you want to make the the front part of your lace uh, you want to make it pointed so that you can you can take actually take the points and thread it through the holes the other part of the lace you want to be blunted so sometimes we'll uh, start at a thick point in the lace with the lace in the holes and I'm gonna swing this around so I can stab it through a thick spot and then once I get it through I'm gonna cut a little hole in it and this will be how we're going to tie off once we finish the lacing so I'll take my scissors and I'll cut a hole And this will actually be the final hole that the lace goes through. And then we'll start, after we get it all nice and tight, we'll start tying off after we go through this hole. So, once you start, you also want to keep in mind that you're going to start and you're going to skip a hole. So, we put it through this hole, so the next hole will be the one next to it on the bottom. So, we'll go in through the face on this hole and then out through the bottom. And then as we pull through, we're gonna come up to this hole and we're gonna skip this one. So every other hole is gonna be skipped. So as we start tying, uh, there's going to be a little bit of water in the beginning, and that's actually a good thing. You want your, your material to hold as much water as it can for a, for a while. And then as we go through, make sure we're, we're on top, we are going to skip the hole, we'll go in through the face, and then we will come out through the inside out. And once we've started doing this way with the rawhide, we want to make sure and keep that um, consistent all the way through. Um, we don't want to do the next hole coming from the inside. We want to always go in through the top and then back through the bottom. And once we get once we get started, because the rawhide starts to dry as you do your work, um, sometimes uh, not, not necessarily on the smaller drums, but on the bigger drums, uh, what happens is I'll have to take like a squeeze bottle, um, a sprayer, and I'll take the, um, the sprayer and, and start spritzing down the lace and the uh, the face and the bottom of the drum to keep it moist because it does start to dry out on its own um, when you start tying it. And every once in a while we need to make sure there's no knots and there's no there's no kinks in your rawhide. And again we're going to skip a hole on the bottom and go in through the top and out through the bottom. And this way we just go all the way around the drum. This is just the first revolution. And then we'll bring it back and go through the other side. Now that we know where we started, we can, um, you can go and just keep threading the lace through. So, and you want to keep enough slack so that later on we're going to start do the tightening where we'll, we'll tighten up the lace. Right now we're not really worried about um, we're not worried about 
it being tight. We just want to get all the holes threaded. And once it's done on one side, then we'll come back and we'll start tightening the other direction. And normally, when I uh, start, and this is just out of experience, I'll keep track of this little pointed piece. Um, if you lose this part, um, you could actually go let it go through, and then if it goes through the, the rawhide, you end up with a knot or a figure eight or something. So I always keep track of this little piece as I pull through. So you'll notice me holding it as I, as I pull the other lace through. It's just a little tip to, to keep everything from, from kinking up on you and keep it from, um, keep it from looking like a big ball of spaghetti. I know in the first episode, um, it was kind of a little hard to see uh, what I was doing and how to do it. Uh, it was because we wanted to show you how to tie a drum. And then as we tie different drums, we're gonna show you the differences between how they come together. So it seems like I'm going a little fast, but <clears throat> it's because I have to work really fast to keep it from drying out. As we go through, and another tip, you always want to use the same kind of lace that, that came from the same kind of rawhide that you're using. Um, there are some projects where you can actually buy the lace that's already pre-cut, and you can use that type of lace um, on certain small projects. But as a rule of thumb with the drum, if there's any way possible, use the same kind of, of skin for your lace as you do with your drum cover. Because if you don't, you could end up with a type of lace that would actually, it might be a little stiffer, it might pull a little bit more, um, than the rawhide that you're working with. And so what happens is your rawhide, um, the eyelets that we work with, these little eyes, um, if you use the exact same kind of skin uh, for your lace, uh, they'll only pull just as much as the eyelet pulls. They'll only stretch as much as the eyelet stretches. So you're not gonna get um, eyelets that will break and bust on you once it gets dry. Okay. This little eyelet uh, is the, the hole that we're gonna put our handle through. Uh, we're gonna put a piece of rope so you can carry the drum. And we don't want it right sitting right beneath uh, a pair of eye holes. So you wanna adjust your hide so that it's between a hole so that it doesn't interfere with the lace and it doesn't, doesn't get uh, in the way. Now at this point, we're gonna take the lace and start to go back the other direction. Uh, we're gonna ignore this uh, end hole for now because what we're gonna do is put it through and have it, have it make the final cross. As these cross, you'll see that there are crosses all the way around the drum the other way. So this will be our final uh, final hole, and this is the point that we tie off at, so it'll actually make its own cross. So instead of this being up and down, it'll, it'll be crossed just like the other lace holes. This is the final. Tightening. I'm 
before we tie our knot. <sighs> it took a little while, but we got our drum tied. And all we need to do is position our handle so that we can hang it up to dry somewhere. That way it will all dry nice and even. We'll put our handle through. And there's where our final knot is. And as it, as it dries, it will shrink up and it'll get a little smaller. So this is our metal drum with white cowhide front and back, top and bottom, and white lace. And we put the, uh, the final lace through the, the slit in the, the rawhide handle, and we tied uh, slip knots in some consecutive fashion to cinch down that knot and make sure that it doesn't move so that your lace stays nice and tight. Uh, once we did that, we put on the handle in the little eyelet hole, and it's just a simple rope that's tied. That way we can uh, hang up our, our two-sided drum to, to dry, and in a few days, it'll, it'll start tightening up real nice. Uh, we've done it in white cowhide, and we've used uh, the white cowhide lace. As you can see, I have some left over. I did this about uh, six and a half rounds. Um, so I knew that I would have a little bit left over and I can use this on another project. So I'm not going to throw it away. Uh, keeping with being frugal, we'll use it for another project. It's going to take a few days to dry, so we're going to hang it up, um, make sure we keep it indoors, and then after about four days, we can take it outside and, uh, and let, let the sun dry it the rest of the way. It'll take it a couple more days. So by next week, this drum should be ready to, uh, we should get a, a nice sound out of it. I'm Sean Little Bear, and I thank you for watching me on the Native Drum, and I hope you learned something. I tend to learn a lot as I go along with you, so I'd like to say goodbye for now, and this has been our episode on the, the small metal rim drum, and hope to see you again. Ha-ho! Yeah.